So what we show here on IEC first time as a prototype is our new dual screen content management. So with the Synip Pro, which is built in here as a rec device, but it's also possible to use it as a standalone unit. It has three HDMI outputs, so we are using one output for the control screen for the professor and two outputs for the projection. So normally it will be behind the professor and the idea behind this, this new UI is to make the life as easy as possible for the professor because it's always complicated, all this streaming control, recording control, web conferencing, doing the presentation, that's complicated. So we designed this user interface. In the upper part, you can see there are two confidence monitors which are showing live what is shown on the screen. And down here, there's the prepare field. So the professor can prepare his presentation by using all the functions which are available on a sign -up. So by the pressing the plus button, he jumps into the menu and for example, use a browser. He can bring, by drag and drop, bring it into the control center, uh, into the prepare field. Also, for example, a whiteboard. But also a file browser is built in. So if you connect to a network drive, to your cloud drive or a USB drive, you can bring in documents directly into the presentation without the need of an additional computer. So let's say we go for a picture here. I just drag and drop it in here. But if I want so, I can go live too because the gesture to move it up here will bring the content live to my confidence monitor and also to the connected monitor. So the whole control is quite easy. Let's say I want to use a whiteboard. I go here to replace. If I go to the side, it will give me an indicator that it's a side-by-side -side view then, and it will be side-by-side -side on the screen. We also support all the protocols such as Miracast, Chromecast, and AirPlay. So let's use my smartphone here to do an AirPlay session to the system. Is and it Bluetooth beaconing areas included? Yes, in yes. So we are using uh, Bluetooth device discovery for uh, uh, AirPlay and all the functions which are available on the protocols with extended screen in a PowerPoint, things like that, is also available here. As you can see, there is already a parked connection here from my iPhone. And if I jump in here and want to use, for example, PowerPoint, then you can see it's even possible to have this extended view. So I have my moderator view here and the live view up here. We can park up to eight connections coming in from students based on Miracast, Chromecast and AirPlay with all the functions. So it's quite easy to do my presentation here and we learned that the professors, they like to have to control always just one content at a time. So if they want to control something, they just tap in it, off it, on it and it will come up on the control screen. And for example, they can then do the, their drawing on a whiteboard. Or if they use a picture, they can swipe between the pictures directly here. So it's always press the control, use, for example, the document camera, set the focus and close it again. So it's really intuitive design. Everything what you see here on the control screen can also be recorded. HDMI 1 will be an own recording, HDMI 2 will be the second recording, and you can have an additional recording as a camera, which is connected over USB, uh, HDMI, or IP. Now the important part when it comes to the hybrid installation, maybe half of the students are at home. We can do web conferencing on the system itself. It's all browser-based, so you can have Zoom, Teams, WebEx, you name it, on the system. How we, do you log into them? Are you, when you log into the Synapse the first time, you get logged into the Microsoft account? There are two possibilities. One is you can have your room account on the system. So we configured here the Austria account. So I just start Teams and it will automatically take from the back end the user credentials. The other way is I use my app, log in in my app with my account and just push my credentials there with one hit of a button and then Andreas Canal in this case will be locked into the system. So to showcase the video conference, I just use now my tablet here. That's a Android tablet running the Teams application on it. And uh, I just go to my recent calls and I call into the Austria room now.
just do a video call. And now you can see I'm calling, that will be the far side from the, from the student. And I get a notification that I'm calling in. Just tap here and pick up the call. So now we are using our camera, which is connected. It's a USB camera and we have a face-to-face -face call. You can see the bandwidth on IEC is always a, bit, a little bit weak, but you can see the camera is transmitted. But now the important thing is how to screen share into a video conference and make it easy. There will be a button in the future here once it is released this summer on, in July. But at the moment, we just use the screen share function of Teams. And now you can see the second monitor, which is displayed here, also in the confidence monitor, is also now my screen share monitor on the far side. If I want to change something, it's really easy. I just use drag and drop, replace, and now it's also in the video conference. If I want to control something, I can draw here and you see there's nearly no latency when it comes to the screen share. And also, it is possible to go side by side, as we saw before, and share different content. So the user always gets the feedback, screen sharing is active, there will be a green border around here, and it's easy to just drag and drop into this field to share to the remote participants. Do you have the Panopto integration in this? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so the credentials for the Panopto, will that also be on the same login? So you're logged into your account at Panopto, so ad hoc recordings to go to your folder and stuff? Yes, yes. So two possibilities. Yet? One is if you want to do an ad hoc recording, you would just press the recording button, but you have to log in first. You can use a USB stick for doing that to store your you credentials. Everything should go to Panopto in our case. At least. Okay. Yes, yes, but uh, you want to log into your, your uh, Panopto account. So that the, if I kind of first, at first when I come into the room, I log in with my phone, it, shouldn't I also then be logged into Panopto? That's not implemented yet. Okay. At the moment, it's a, uh, typing in your user credentials on the touch screen, yep. but it will be in the future. And once you record, we're going to have three recordings stored on the system and then uploaded to Panopto and we have the full integration with Panopto that we can guarantee the upload was successful and then we delete it on the system. But it's also possible to use SignUp as a capture agent, a remote capture agent and receive the recordings which are planned by the university. Also this is supported. Yes, uh, like 98% of our recordings is still uh, scheduled recordings. Yes, so, so this is... Will... Does all the, the functions within the Panopto scheduling now work and uh, the yes. previewing? And yes, the, uh, yeah. everything is working. Yeah. We are fully integrated, so we have a partnership with Panopto. Yeah. And uh, you, if you use your management tool of, of Panopto, you're going to have the live previews. You can schedule the recordings. Even if it is turned off, it will turn on and start the recording. There are no separate streams within Panopto. So there, are three, yeah. there are three separate streams live streams from one, two, and three. Once the stream is done, we also upload the file in addition and replace the recording to have the best quality on Panopto then. Yeah. And also, if somebody comes in the room and there's scheduled, uh, a Panopto scheduled recording, is that visualized somewhere on the screen so they know, oh, I, if they can't do ad hoc recording and then kind of cancel yes. out the schedule? Yes, yes. Yeah. There is always a feedback up here. This is not implemented yet. When the scheduled recording is running, there is a red flashing light and the time which is recording so he gets always the feedback, the optical feedback if there is a recording in the room.